I didn't like this episode. I never thought I would actually hear myself saying that about something Vivzy Pop made, but here we are. Really though, I can't be the only one who didn't like this episode, right? I mean, it just wasn't that good compared to the first two episodes. Episodes 1 and 2 had a good story, funny dialogue, and in some cases, powerful emotional moments. But this episode? Kinda lacking in all those categories, and pretty much anything else of value. Alright, that might sound a bit harsh, but let me explain why I feel this way about the episode. Okay, so usually in Hell of a Boss, the first five minutes or so are reserved for exposition to set the episode up. This episode is no different, but it isn't done as well as the other episodes, because they overload the first five minutes with information. In episode 1, they're able to naturally introduce a new character and set up the conflict in the five minutes, and it works very well. But in episode 3, they introduce two new characters, a romance side plot, a backstory between one of the new characters and one of the main characters, and the episode's main conflict, all in the exact same time frame of five minutes. If you're going to introduce way more stuff, then you should give yourself longer than five minutes so that the exposition feels more natural. But it isn't all they do in the first five minutes that annoy me. Oh, no, 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 no. For some strange reason, they decided to put filler in this already cramped intro. Like, there's this one really awkward scene where Blitz, Vortex, and Mayday are all just randomly laughing at this one crappy joke that Blitzo made in the middle of them arguing, and then there's a jarring cut back to them hating each other. Again. You would. Or I'll, um, uh, I'll call HR. <laughs> anyway. There's also this one scene where Moxie gets sexually harassed by Mayday and her band members, and it adds nothing to the story or plot, which is literally the definition of filler. I guess I'm just confused, because including filler is so unlike this series. These episodes are short and fast-paced, with little time for dwaddling, so I find it odd that they wasted runtime on stuff like this. But that's only the first five minutes, right? The rest of the episode is probably better, right? I'm sure you're saying. Well, if you are saying that, then you're definitely wrong. I actually think this episode's story was good. The IMP making a bet with an adversary to see who can kill more people is actually a really interesting concept that could have made for a good episode. But it's the other things in the episode that make the plot fall apart. For starters, the stakes for the episode are that the IMP might get their only parking spot in the building's lot taken away for a week. Those are the stakes. Really. Can those even be called stakes? Blitz literally tells Millie to park the van in a temporary spot during the episode. Millie, find a temporary spot for that truck, okay? The only consequence if they lose the challenge is that they might have to park slightly farther away for one week. And that's it. There's also the fact that Mayday is actually a pretty unimportant character for a majority of the episode. It feels like she didn't actually do anything besides make a bunch of humans get drunk and horned up. And yeah, she threw the magic booze into the ocean and made the catfish go all mutant, but that thing was killed in two minutes. It just kind of feels like wasted potential. This episode could have been so good, but it wasn't. Anyways, the creators probably realized that you were getting a bit bored right about now, so they decided to create a climax. Sort of. So the climax of this episode is that a giant mutant catfish spawns and tries to eat Moxie, who is now completely blasted, which is why he isn't fighting back. And if you feel like that's completely out of nowhere, then you're right, because it is completely out of nowhere. <laughs> really though, it almost feels like this episode was 14 minutes long originally, then they went back and added this part in post to lengthen the runtime. Anyways, the climax goes nowhere because Millie kills the catfish before it can eat Moxie, and it only takes like 2 minutes. I honestly would have preferred it if this episode were 14 minutes long and they wrote the catfish part out of it, because it felt so forced. Okay, so now we're about to get to the ending, and it's actually the best part of the episode. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, the episode ends with Mayday and Blitz coming to an agreement. The IMP agree not to tell anybody in Hell that Mayday accidentally spawned a giant catfish monster that terrorized some humans, and Mayday agrees to let them use the parking space in exchange for their silence. Then the creators pull one of the most unexpected and hilarious twists I've seen in a while. The mortal police show up and cart Mayday and her posse off to prison. I think that that ending was perfect, and is probably one of the best endings that Helpful Boss has had so far. It's actually even better than the episode 1 ending, which ended with a random office party. Anyways, this episode actually isn't done annoying me yet. Oh no, it still has one... one flaw. That isn't exactly a flaw, but it's just something that annoys me personally. The thing that probably annoys me most about this episode is that it completely ruined the Helpful Boss fandom for me. Why? I think I'll just let the odd ones out explain. Furry, 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 furry. Yeah, this episode introduced a furry ship that made me want to not visit the Hell of a Boss community anymore. 
I don't even want to imagine the fan art and uh, other stuff that's come out of this episode. At least the ship doesn't seem to be ongoing because Vortex got arrested at the end, but the damage has already been done to the community. I bet the sub has been ravaged by furries at this point, and uh, I already thought there were too many, so I don't even want to think about what percentage of the fandom are actually furries now. Anyways, there's one more thing I want to talk about real quick before I get to the positives. This is the controversial part of the episode where I talk about the stuff I didn't like about the art. I usually really love the animation and art in Viv's work, and I still love it in this episode. Except for, uh, the people and, um, and the thumbnail. Really though, the people in this episode look kinda rough. I don't know why, but Spindle Horse really didn't do a good job with drawing these people. And Spindle Horse isn't even bad at drawing people. Like, look at Martha. She looks fine. But these beachgoers, uh, they aren't looking the best. Bruh. Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, look at the top of his head. <laughs> look at his lips. <laughs> and as for the thumbnail. I just don't think it looks as good as the other two. It's easier to tell in, in a lineup. I think it would look better if they just removed Millie and Moxie and scooted Blitz and Luna over a little bit, but those are the only complaints I have about the art. The rest of it looks fine. Okay, so I feel like I've been super hard on this episode in this video, so let's talk about everything I liked. Even though I didn't particularly like this episode, I still think it had some great moments. There's some good scenes in the beginning, like the fourth wall break. You know the kind of freaks up there who drool all over you. In the part where they use Blitz's drawing to explain the plan, I think that that was actually the most creative part of the episode. Um, the episode's middle was pretty good. The montage of human Luna luring in targets was nice. Drunk Moxie was actually really hilarious and made me realize just how talented a voice actor Richard Horvitz is. And like I mentioned before, it had a really good ending. And, uh, that's all I have for positives. Unfortunately, that's about it. I'm sorry. This episode wasn't that great. I didn't really like it. I think that it could have been way better if the creators thought it through a little more, or maybe handled it a little bit differently. I have a feeling that once we start to get more episodes of the series, and people are a little less afraid to criticize previous episodes, this episode will sort of be like Stranger Things Season 2, Episode 7. You know, like that one bad episode amidst the sea of good ones. Or maybe it won't, because at the time I'm recording this, it has one dislike for every 180 likes, which is way higher than all the other episodes. But that's definitely subject to change. Anyways, I hope future episodes are as good as 1 and 2 and don't turn out the way this one did. This episode almost falls in last on my Vivzy Pop ranking chart, by the way. Oh, wow. It feels weird, because I never thought I would actually have to use the lower tiers of this chart again. Oh, well. Not everything can be great, I guess. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, then that means that you're mature enough to understand that other people have different opinions than you, and you were willing to hear why I felt this way. So good for you. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video around. Bye.